Welcome everyone to our satsang session this morning. Having the conversation that is probably the most difficult to have about letting go. <clears throat> and so what I'd like to do this morning is reframe the conversation completely because it's a bit of a misnomer actually that we're letting go. Who is there to let anything go? Who is there really to pick anything up? And this really keeps people stumped. Ego loves it. Ego loves this conversation. There is a me and I'm important to be letting something go. And the reality is that's not the case. So let's, let's dive into an incredibly practical conversation and experience today to understand <clears throat> what we're talking about and how it is that we can be free, know our freedom, know our liberation beyond any understanding or notion of bondage. What that means when I say that is that bondage is not possible and not real. Bondage is not possible and isn't real. How can we come to really understand this? Well, here's the good news. You are the decision maker. What you are has nothing to do with any thought, any concept, any label, any idea any opinion, any feeling, any sensation, none of it. You are incorruptible, invulnerable. The essence of you cannot be touched by a thing. You have nothing to let go of, in fact. So whilst all of the, the greatest teachers and, and spiritually enlightened masters since the dawn of time, as well as scientists now in our modern world, <clears throat> tell us that letting go is important. Let's understand what we're speaking to here, because this will leap those of you who are ready into a glorious, spacious, imperturbable peace. You have nothing to let go of. You have no fight to fight. The hack that I want to share with you today is one that very few understand, but we're not here to, to hold anything back, are we? Knowing the truth is what will save humanity, so to speak, what will lead you to the knowing of the fullest measure of love, of oneness consciousness and light the way for others. Understand that everything of the world represents the attachment to a personal self. So if there's anything to let go of, it's a mere idea that there is a person that can hold on to anything. This idea of the impersonal nature of the carnal mind is what I want to talk about today, because understanding this sets you free from the idea that there are ever problems to solve and that you can do anything to solve them. It's impossible. This is what I learned from 25 years in naturopathic and functional medicine practice. You can't fix a body. There's not a body to be fixed. We want to be speaking always to the deepest root cause, that deepest causative origin of perspective. And what that is, is the belief that there is a personal self when that is simply removed from the landscape of perspective, the light will shine genius wisdom will dawn upon you your full power 
your peace will be realized. The kind of peace that, as it says in the Bible, Bible is the peace that passeth understanding because it cannot be understood. There's not a human mind that has the capacity to understand anything that's of true value and importance. That's why the highest wisdom is declaring, I don't know anything. I do not know anything. A confined human mind cannot know the eternal, cannot know that which is infinite. But we can know it in our essential being, as our essential being. When we realize that the carnal mind, the mortal mind, what we believe ourselves to be, which cannot be proven, as our modern scientists tell us, the idea that there's an objective world with a bunch of bodies running around in it, now that's theory. That's the theory. And for those of us who learn how to question perspective, we can see that the idea of a personal self doesn't stand up in truth. It can be dismissed, erased like that, which allows freedom. So what we need to understand is that it is the sense of personhood and everything that we hold to be personal that is the cause of all suffering. There isn't a person who suffers. It's the idea of personhood that causes suffering, that causes wanting, that causes lack, that causes limitation, that causes everything we don't want. So we're trying to, to reach what we want from an absolutely inherently flawed premise that will never bring happiness. It's, it's MO is doubt, is frustration. As we often say in our, in our conversations, what ego does, which is the sense of personhood in its entirety, is has, a, is has us, is has us, yep, that sounds right, questioning, am I there yet? Is this right? It's just spewing forth these never-ending doubt-filled questions. Why? Because a sense of personhood leaves the greater part of you veiled. And this tiny, tiny part, a smidgen, we often call it a speck of dust, a peephole through which the oneself is trying to understand. And it can't because it's an attempt to, to turn something that is infinite without limits, without beginning and end into something that is finite. So we live a life knowing that the best of us, the most of us, the rest of us is missing. So we're on a merry-go-round search for what's missing. What's that thing that's missing? So we're here to understand today that there is, there is one way for us to definitively be free. This conversation about letting go is the relinquishment of the idea that there is a personal self that everything that I experience through the, through the lens of personhood leads me in the wrong direction. And everything, in fact, about the carnal mind, mortal mind, which means the personal mind, is impersonal. So what's the hack? Recognising this impersonal nature of everything that I perceive, knowing that it veils the truth of something greater, a discovery so vast, it is the Holy Grail. The greatest discovery that there could ever be, that which is true behind that which is false. The mortal mind is the veil to the thing that you're looking for, which is the luminous, imperturbable, invulnerable light of being. So everything of the mortal mind needs to be let go of. That's the letting go part. But this is done with, with effortlessness, with ease. How? Let's get right to it. How do we do this? How do we let this go with effortless, effortless ease? Well,
we watch. We watch the mind. We watch the body. We watched the entire mortal mind, carnal mind perspective, because it has nothing to do with your infinite glorious truth. The belief in a personal self is a confinement, a containment. It's a prison. That's why, that's why you, like everyone, feels like this is a prison. I feel like I'm powerless in some way. I feel like I'm contained in some way rather than liberated in the imperturbable flow of life without interference from thoughts and stories. So how can we, how can we liberate the true self from this mortal mind? How can we let go? to realize the fullness of our heart, which is what we're seeking. There's not another person that allows that. We are truly self-sufficient. You have the God self available. And until we realize that, we're, we're searching, we're seeking, we're looking for something. It's not to be found in the world. This is not, this is not news. This is not breaking news. We're not breaking any news today, in fact. We're simply repeating the same story that has been said for thousands upon thousands of years by those who have walked the way of liberation. So how is it that we can see through, see beyond that which seems to contain us? By watching. By recognising the, the patterns the stories, the thoughts, the feelings. Let's be very clear about what comprises the mortal mind, the carnal mind, the sense of personhood. They're all synonyms. The idea of a Sally is a limitation on truth. And that's what holds me back. That's what keeps me seeing by this very defined by these very defined and confined parameters. But what I want is on the other side of Sally. But I can't see what's on the other side of Sally when I'm wearing Sally. So we'll open this up for Satsang Q&A shortly. Let's just understand this a little bit more deeply because that which you're seeking is that which is looking. I can no longer be vested, invested in what I seem to be aware of because the thing that I'm looking for is that which is doing the looking, doing the observing. That's why I can never quite find it. It looks like, oh, that shiny thing over there, whether that's a wife, a husband, another child, a new job, uh, uh, fill in the blank, whether it's any of those things. You, you have already attained so much in your life. Was it any of those things? This is not rocket surgery. This is actually what, <clears throat> what I've come to realize about spiritual awakening is that it's the most logical thing that there is. When you question the reality of your perspective, you've got the proof right there. There's no leap of faith required. We're not here to say believe something. That's the problem. We're not here to believe anything. We're here to withdraw belief. Withdrawing belief takes that confined, invisible prison bars of Sally, insert your name, of course, out. What's left? Wholeness and completeness. Or else I'm forever thinking that there's something missing, contained by this idea of a person contained by the mortal, mortal mind, the carnal mind, as it's been referred to in, in spiritual teachings and scripture. I am stuck, right royally stuck, trying to make my way and defend an illusion, making 
temporal hits of happiness that come with temporal hits of stuff I don't want as well. None of that is, is what we're meant to experience at all in this world. We're here to be entirely liberated in the knowing of truth. The idea of a personal self is a lie. That's what is playing at the deepest, deepest core, as, we, as we've talked about, well, some of us anyway, have talked about in the beliefs research that uh, we, we have been undertaking. We discovered that there was this deep sense of being a fraud, being wrong in some way, being powerless, which was actually the number one belief that came back from all of that research. We're not. All of that stems from the idea that there is a me, which rests on a foundation of ideas and beliefs that have nothing to offer me that will fill me up in the way that I really want to be filled. The world is just a, a holding pen for awakening, essentially. So let's get into understanding how we can continue to expose that which I'm not to let the light that I'm looking for. Where's that light? Where's that love? Where's that lightness? Where's that relaxation? Where's that peace? Where's that rest? Where is that rest? I know it's somewhere. You know it's somewhere. It's not without. It's within. It's your natural essence. Everything that you want is what you already are and nothing else. You are not a struggle machine. You are not a doing machine. You're not even a suffering machine. You're not here to get or do or be anything. You are here to know yourself as everything, as all. The knowing that I already have everything is the most profound set point or state, shall we say, or space from which to live. What, is, what do you think a life lived from I already have everything is like rather than ego's game, this cruel game that ego plays of I need to get something, I'm missing something. I think cruel is a pretty good word for it, don't you? I'm missing something. What you have is not enough. You need something better, something more. So we watch, this is the simplest, simplest way home to perfect wholeness and completeness. We recognize that everything other than the truth, humans suffer from, from a lack of contextual understanding. What is the truth? What is the truth? Well, it's not something that you learn. No learning is required. In fact, you are the truth. There isn't a truth and you. You are the truth. Everything's always pointing back to the magnificence. A Course in Miracles says a greatness and magnitude. The greatness and magnitude of what you are is your essential being without learning. It comes before, it comes before the idea of a personal self, which is where you're kind of stayed stuck and you don't need to letting go means you take off that invisible cloak of mortal mind to realize you are the light of the world you are the light of life itself life creates life life doesn't create persons life creates life you are that life you are the infinity of life Knowing that, it's pretty easy to spot what you're not. And you can watch this. So what we're here to do, the fast way from, from my own uh, experience and the work that I do is to recognize with clarity what you are not. The easy way to really understand this is that a thought is a confinement, a containment of infinity. The mind has the capacity to think and perceive, but only in a contained way. 
your greatness is before mind, is before a thought. Therefore, any thought is just part of the, the prison of perception, part of the mortal mind realm. You are no thought. You are no belief. You are no idea, concept, story, feeling, sensation. Nothing of what's called the phenomenal realm, nothing that is downstream of awareness. You are awareness itself. You are the infinity of omnipotence omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient being. You already are everything. You already have everything. The way to expansively know the fulfillment of that which you already are is to put down that which veils the truth. Everything of awareness is a prison. Every thought you could ever have. So what we can do is watch. And it's often a, a great surprise to those I work with to recognize that. To recognize that you are the witness and you can watch what your thoughts, your mind-body complex, as we say, is doing. You have that power right now. You can begin to realize your vastness right now. You can watch what the mind is doing. Where does the mind have a story playing? What are the, the thoughts? What is, what is experience telling you? We really flip the world in, in awakening. We recognize that the world is the diagnostic tool for my state of mind. I'm seeing something that is contained by a prison imposed by an idea that there is a me and that idea doesn't exist. Therefore, I am not contained. I am free. I always have been and I can never be anything but free. And when that sense of personhood is out of the way, life transforms. It looks entirely different. Everything about the truth, the true meaning, purpose of the world, which is oneness, is revealed, the stream of love simply pours forth when I am no longer contained and confined by an imaginary mortal mind. So we can watch. And many of you already know how to do this. We use the archetypes, for example, to see what we can't see. This, this imposter, this mortal mind, this sense of personhood that has attached to me, essentially, has nothing to do with me, but I can't see through it very easily. We often, we often talk about this, don't we, that it's impossible almost to see beyond our own blind spots. The, uh, the shadow archetype work really helps us to do this. We can see instantly where the prostitute, the child, the victim and the saboteur, those four um, shared collective unconscious archetypes that are the foundation for all other ar archetypes, really points us so clearly to what we are not. Helps us to see the patterns that we're just playing over and over, over again, which leads to this kind of looping Groundhog Day experience. Today is a repeat of yesterday. Today and tomorrow are repeats of yesterday until we break free. The future is predictable. What's the past been like? You're never gonna be different. It's never gonna be different. It might look like things change, scenes change, the goalposts change. But if, if there is any sense of personhood, it's not going to change at all. At all. So we're looking in this impartial witness way at all that is impersonal. This is one of the teachings, as I was saying, that, that many of the, the great masters have shared with us. The sense of personhood is impersonal. What we think is personal isn't. It's not impersonal. It's got nothing to do with you. You are the light of life. You are the child of creation. The truth is the truth. You can verify this for yourself. You know how to explore awareness. 
which requires no mind. You are no mind. And nothing that the mind has contained has anything to do with you. And to stay attached to that, which is this conversation of letting go, is what keeps us from the happiness that we're being pulled back to always, the peace that we're being called to remains veiled, remains hidden, whilst I think there is a me who is lacking something. So we sit and we watch as the witness, recognising the impersonal nature of the dream of personhood. I want to share something with you this morning. This is from um, some of the work of David Hawkins, just a couple of paragraphs. Everything is perfect as it is. In the state of acceptance, well, there's only a few sentences in before I've, I'm called to share with you. The witness position is the non-resistant seat of acceptance. I'm accepting what is. I'm now recognizing it's not what I have thought it was. That's why we often refer to A Course in Miracles uh, workbook lessons and teachings because that clearly tells us everything that I see in the world has the meaning it has for me because I've given it. It's not because it's inherent. But what meaning I have given veils true meaning. The true meaning of life is infinite love, is oneness. In the state of acceptance, there is the feeling that nothing needs to be changed. Already, seating yourself in that witness seat provides a breath, an expanse of stillness and calm and restfulness. The knowing of peace begins to filter through when we're no longer attached, in resistance. Everything is perfect and beautiful the way it is. And we fail to see that when we're wanting things to be different, which as you're hearing now is impersonal nothingness, simply built on the acceptance of the idea of separation. The world is to be enjoyed. There is compassion for others and for all living things. In this state, we are automatically nurturing and supportive of others without any feelings of sacrifice. Because of the inner security and feeling of abundance, there is generosity and ease of giving with no expectation of return or record keeping, such as, here's what I am doing for you. And isn't that ego's MO? And what are you going to do for me? When we're in a state of acceptance, we love our friends instead of being critical. And we're willing to love them in spite of their limitations, which we willingly overlook. The way people appear to us from this space is that everyone is actually doing the best they can with what they have at the moment. We see that all of life is evolving towards its perfection and we are in sync with the laws of the universe and consciousness. This is where, as we often talk about, commandment number two is so important to understand. But commandment number two has been misunderstood. Yes, we treat each other with dignity and respect and kindness because we understand that the world is the illusion of the belief in personhood. What we really are is one. This is how we begin to accelerate and amplify all of those good feelings that we're chasing, thinking that they are conditional in events and circumstances being the way we want them to be. It's never worked before, has it? And that's not because you've done anything wrong. It's because it can't. We're looking for that which is looking. We're looking for peace. Peace is looking. There it is. We're looking for love. Love is looking. There it is. We're looking for joy. Joy is looking. There it is. We really have had this backwards, upside down, inside out perspective holding us back 
from realizing the fullest measure of all that is of life right here in this moment, no conditions. The, the conditional way of living, the doing to fill in the blank, get, be, do, have, is ego. That's the idea that there's a person to get, do, be, have. That's the losing game. That's just the, the looping cycle. We're here to realize I am, that I am, that, I, that one, that I am. In the state, we, we really begin to understand love. We understand it, not intellectually. You can't, you can't do awakening intellectually and informationally. We let go of everything we think we know to realize true knowledge. On the level of acceptance, love is experienced as a stable state, a permanent condition of a relationship. That's the self, the self relationship, not in relationship to others. The source of love is seen to be within ourselves, emanating from our own nature and reaching out to include others. In the state of desire, by contrast, we speak of being in love as the source of happiness and love is thought to be outside of ourselves. When we're in the lower energy of desire, we're looking to be loved. It seems to be something we get. On the level of acceptance, however, our lovingness radiates out naturally from the essence of our being, because many of the blocks to its awareness have been, what do you know, surrendered. We discover that this lovingness is our inner nature and that it appears spontaneously and automatically when the blocks are removed. This is what the great teachers mean by our true inner essence, our true self. It is the aim of our inner self to transcend the ego. That composite of all our negative feelings, programs and thoughts so that we're able to experience the inner essential nature. There are many pathways that can carry us to the state of acceptance. And this is the gateway which leads eventually to the next highest states described as the consciousness levels of love and peace. To many people who have been surrendering for periods of time, this ultimate objective progressively supersedes all others. To dwell in states of unconditional love and imperturbable peace become the inner aim more important than any other achievement. So the task of life is no longer about getting, having, being, doing, it's about realizing. As we just heard, we progressively, expansively realize the light of being as we let go. Now, I want to speak to briefly two ways of letting go before we open this up for Q&A. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is so deeply entrenched in uh, spiritual teaching. When we, when we look, when we look at the stories, when we look at the arrogance of ego, which is the sense of personhood that has kept us from knowing ourself, this is, there is nothing more self-loving than self-realization. There is nothing more all-loving than self-realization. Because without self-realization, there is an obstacle to love. The sense of personhood, the carnal mind, has fear and hate as the agenda. There is always a you and me. When we explore deeply what's behind that and find that it's our own fear of love, forgiveness, as we talk about in the self-transcendence alchemy framework, forgiveness is key. When we recognize the programs of the collective unconscious, those shadow archetypes, which you've all got access to, is, the, is one of the most profound trainings that there is to see clearly this idea of a personal self is just a program. Here's how you can see where the prostitute has played you, the child has played you, the victim has played you, the saboteur has played you. It's not you. You can forgive. And as Buddhism tells us, 
when you simply watch without resistance and let all that is of the mortal mind, everything that you are aware of, feelings in particular pass, they pass. But you keep your eye on the truth. We're not here to validate our perceptual package, our person as real. We're here to actually transcend that lesser realm, to realize love, peace, the fullness of being. There isn't a person who's suffering. When we recognize that what's arising for us is that one choice looping over and over again, the one choice, the one choice to accept what's arising whilst recognizing the truth. Eventually, the, the show of the world that has had your attention no longer gets your attention. As we just heard from David Hawkins, gradually, with practice, that which is unreal is replaced by the truth of love's oneness. So letting go may not be as we've understood it really. There is no person to let go. We're letting go of the idea of personhood. We're letting go of the idea of personhood. And we can do this because you can't fail to realize what you are when you actually look at what you really are. You will start to see that what you have believed yourself to be is truly a belief to be undone, a belief to be let go of, so that the, the luminous light of being can shine through where you are self sufficient and supplied. As, a, as part of the tree of life. You cannot be separate. You cannot be without. The idea that I can be without something is just an idea. The idea that I'm lacking so something is just the idea of a person at the very core of the entire dream of the world. So let's wrap it up there. I've gone a bit longer than I, I normally like to, and we can open this up for for questions and sharings, because that's how we, how we learn together, how we rise together. All right, I'm going to start in the hub and then I'll throw this over to the Zoom room. Ruth has made more of a statement question, but it's a really helpful one. So I'd like to share it. All perception is erroneous. Question mark. Yes. Let's get into this a little bit because this is this really speaks to all of us who have recognized there's something not quite right with the world and we've attempted to find a higher perspective. A better perspective, let's say. We've tried to create our own reality, which I know we've had this conversation several times before, but let's have it again because it's a cracker. So settle, settle in. We'll be here for a few hours. <laughs> no, we won't. This will be the topic of another conversation entirely uh, because it's one that needs to be had. There's this idea that I can create my reality and that a higher perspective is better. Now, I know, Ruth, that you already realise it isn't, but looking for the higher perspective in a very masterful way will eke out the mortal carnal mind even more. 
Now, what I mean by that is ego keeps up on the spiritual journey. That's why most spiritual conversations are ego oriented. There is no higher perspective. There is no better perspective. There is no, and, and I fell for this. This was my career. I, I was the most obnoxious. Well, every naturopath is really. Person that there, there is. Arrogance of ego is perspective, opinion, preference. For example, organic food is better than conventional produce. That being a vegetarian, perhaps, is better than being a meat eater. Fill in the blank. What, what have you thought is a better perspective at any stage? A private school is better than a public school. There's gazillions of them, aren't there? If our if our experience of the world was dependent upon, let me find the best thought, let me find the best perspective, doesn't that just hurt your head? Just contemplating that. Well, what is the best perspective? I actually remember going to a, um, a conference uh, with Jack Canfield many years ago. And that was the dominant conversation. What's, What's the best belief? Let me find the beliefs that aren't working and let me replace them with beliefs that do. What's the best belief to have? What a torturous way to live that is. It's still stuck in the paradigm of the carnal mind, of the mortal mind. Stuck. A thought, a belief confines infinity here's infinity is, is infinity that thought i think we're all smart enough and it doesn't take smart to figure that out is one thought infinity that's why it's the corruption on infinity that's why we're here to rec to to recognize that all perception is my suffering is why i'm afraid is why i'm scared is why i'm hurting is why i'm I'm upset is why I'm anxious is why I'm worried. That's why we're upset. Because behind any preference is a belief that its opposite exists as well. And when we learn to, to inquire and question perspective, we can see that behind all perspective is fear. To be forgiven, to be let go of, it's going to come wrapped up in a perceptual package. Behind the idea that organic food is best is the idea that conventional produce is going to make me sick and I'm going to die. Maybe a little bit simplified, but perhaps not. Behind every perspective, Perception is not part of the realm of truth. So you're spot on, Ruth. You answered your own question, really, I know. All perception, which you're seeing so clearly, is erroneous. Opening the heart, opening the heart to love, to this, the presence of being. If we stay stuck in our thoughts, we will never do anything but suffer. It's not possible. The thoughts take us all over the place but we're not interested in where the thoughts take us, but what's behind them. You can follow the trajectory of your thoughts and go, well, that's where that thought will lead. But to play at that level of what's the right thought, what's the wrong thought is a never ending game that still keeps you away from the knowing of your luminous essence. We want to head the other way, closer to what's looking. Where, where did that thought begin? As we know, there's the understanding, as we've talked about today, the hack of realizing all mortal carnal mind personal, personhood ideas are impersonal and I can just watch them. And when we start to watch, we see the insanity, just as Einstein, just, just as Einstein said, 
insane insane but none of this is you you are invulnerable love at the at the very core so i want to speak to something important here it's not that there's nothing without perception ego ego loves that story well without me there's nothing without me you're nothing without the thinking mind without ego where which lives in the thinking mind ego is not you you know in a more profound more authentic and more real way than ever before your infinite self without ego you're not nothing you're everything take the thoughts out what's left the door open to omniscience that's all wisdom and intelligence the door open to omnipresence the recognition of love everywhere the door open to omnipotence the the knowing that there's only one power that's your that's your eternal immortal nature right there without thoughts without perspective there is knowing there is just pure life there is just pure consciousness without any corruption without any conditions none at all ruth said can i speak to these higher higher appearing desires okay let's let's do this because this is great the the spiritual ego will have us still desiring looking making our desires look spiritual making our our decisions look spiritual Here's here's something to remember for those of you that want the highest knowing of fulfillment the highest spiritual discernment God is it already is it is done there is no truth to anything needs to be done a certain way seen a certain way that's ego that's the that's the personal self that's a paradigm truth is beyond all paradigms there's not a way to think we we're, we're here to as uh those of you who are part of the one the satsang community we we're, we're here to expand in pure consciousness and awareness awareness of being that's where all the the knowledge lies that's where all the secrets lie that's where all that's where the holy grail the prize that we're all seeking lies and it already is there's nothing to do in order for life to be any more than it already is it's just that we don't have a clue about the truth because we've been contained by an i know mind that thinks it knows it thinks it knows everything when really we're here to say the fast way to perfect love is to declare i know nothing i know nothing i can't know anything it's if for me to say i know something it's like saying i'm i'm as good as god that's where this idea of creating your own reality i think we might make that our next conversation actually comes from okay doki over to the zoom room what questions have we got
Chris, I can see you've typed something here. Fear is coming up. Yep. No person, no meaning in the world. Well, I think we've spoken to this, so I'll just re repeat what we've said. What's fear? Is that something you can be aware of? Yep. No meaning, no person in the world. Is that a thought or reality? A thought? No person, no meaning in the world. Well, that would produce fear, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's, that's a nice, easy equation. I can still keep up with that one. Although I'm getting very concerned about grade eight maths. This one I can do. No, no person, no meaning in the world. Yeah, there's, there's a story right there. So you can observe that. You can witness this. Chris, on, uh, speaking directly to you, you've got a whole host of tools to question perspective. What we simply do is recognize there is no story. There are no thoughts. There's, in fact, some of you, are at the point where you recognize there's no thought that's different. There's no feeling that's different. We spend a life trying to run away from fear and feel, well, some people call it great, but really it's just not fear. And we try and hang out there as much as possible. Oh no, here, here comes fear. It's the same thing. We're not here to, 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 prefer one thing over another, we're here to recognize there's a story. So you've got an opportunity to apply forgiveness. There's no, there's no valid question as such, is there? Every question is pointing, is pointing to our own state of mind. Every perspective is pointing to our own state of mind. Great. If the fear is coming up, this is, this is the recognizing the, the, program of fear that has been behind what we call a life. And we remain contained and confined, but that fear isn't you. It's kept you from knowing the love that you are. So remember that we're not here to pander to what arises, we recognize only the truth is true. This is a perspective. Chris, what other, have I missed something in there or what else is there in that? Okay, so what we're here to recognize is what arises, we're either resisting or we're accepting. There it is. This is for me to forgive and let go, or I'm holding on. There's fear coming up. There it is. I'm holding on. There it is. It's got something to do with me. We've just established it's all impersonal. It's all impersonal. I can watch and what we're going to see are all of the stories that come attached with emotions. The stories come attached with emotions. We feel something and go, oh, that's me. That's me feeling it. No, it's not. You're welcome, Chris. No, nothing you can be aware of has anything to do with you. It tells you 
that there is an erroneous belief, an idea, a mere assumption, not real. What you really are is wrapped up with this as well. What you really are is not something that you're unfamiliar with. It's your very own life, your very own being, the purity of consciousness that is behind all of it, that's buried like a golden pin in a haystack, as we often say. It's buried under erroneous assumptions. And it is in letting go of assumptions, essentially, and there's really only one, the belief in separation, to recognize that you are fundamentally what you are without all that you have held onto in terms of belief of being something you're not, actually veils what you're looking for, actually keeps you from realizing the fulfillment of being and it's here and it's now and that's happiness and that's peace and that's joy. So letting go is essential so that we can make our way in, in higher states of, of consciousness. Another way to say that is in purer states of consciousness to that I am. I am. That I am that, that you're already familiar with. It's just all the other stuff of awareness that you are not, which is what we're speaking to today in letting go. Well, it's an hour. Bex, collect all of those questions for another session. And we'll come back, as we are always, immersing deeply in the truth of being already all that is, already the whole universe. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to bring your questions and we will have them answered. Happy day.